The year is 1995. In that year, the film Johnny Mnemonic premiered, showing what a futuristic world could look like if run by the internet, and no one bought it. Also that same year, competitive fighting games were at an all-time high. But another major event happened, and it involved one of Capcom's hottest selling games up to that point. Street Fighter Alpha. Street Fighter Alpha was originally released in 1995 in arcades and expanded upon Street Fighter 2, which at this point was starting to grow a little stale. It even had an art style similar to X-Men Chun of the Atom and the then recently released Darkstalkers. And around this time, X-Men was at the height of its popularity, thanks to the TV series of the same name. So what would happen if we took a mega popular fighting game series and combined that with a mega popular superhero franchise? You get... I'll go with that. X-Men vs. Street Fighter was originally released in arcades in 1996, a year after Marvel Super Heroes. It was the first crossover game between two different companies. Now, what I mean by that is that while there were crossover fighting games before then, it was usually two different franchises from the same company. Games like Fighters Mega Mix, The King of Fighters, but they never really tiptoed outside of that. Sure, it's common nowadays with games like Super Smash Bros. and Brawlhalla, but back then, this was a major breakthrough. In November 1997, the game was ported over to the Sega Saturn. Now, first off, take a look at this giant of a box. Is this the whole game? Nope, it's to hold the required 4 megabyte RAM cartridge that's needed to play this game. I didn't mention this previously, but Children of the Atom and Marvel Super Heroes actually had to cut corners to fit onto the Sega Saturn's limited memory. You can't tell the difference when playing normally, but when you take a look at a comparison video, it's pretty obvious. But the RAM card adds extra memory to the console, which allows near-perfect arcade ports on the Saturn. So the game starts up and you get this pretty awesome intro, showing off all the different matchups that you can do. And we finally get... X-Men vs. Street Fighter! Ryu and Cyclops shake hands as if they sign an important business deal. And we get to the character select screen, which has a sweet remix of the Children of the Atom character select screen. The Street Fighter characters are all from Street Fighter Alpha, while we have some newcomers on the X-Men side, like Rogue, Gambit, and Magneto and Juggernaut from Children of the Atom. So let's get into a match, shall we? Ready. Oh my god. This game is absolutely amazing. I feel like every complaint I had about the previous two games were rectified in this game. The visuals are amazing. The combos and hits are satisfying. And sure, I was playing on the lowest difficulty, but it still felt fair and challenging. Some major mechanics are introduced here that would become mainstays in the franchise. The first one is the tag team, which allows you to swap out different characters, meaning that you can strategize when you need to swap to a different character. The next one is the air combo, or the aerial rave in the Japanese version of the game. Get a bunch of combos while you're up in the air. Honestly, aerial rave sounds way cooler and has some personality, while air combo just tells you what you just did. You get some great remixes of character themes like Ken, Chun Li, and so much more. For our final boss, we get Apocalypse. So it's nice to see Capcom use lesser known Marvel characters. I think this is where my only gripe about this game comes in, as Apocalypse can be quite difficult if you're not paying attention to his moveset and those random turrets trying to shoot at you. But after some persistence, I was able to beat Apocalypse and... Ready. Fight. So in an interesting twist, you fight your tag partner as the secret final boss of this game. I don't think I've ever seen a fighting game do something like this. But once you do defeat your tag partner, you finally get your respective characters ending. Since I chose Chun-Li, she joins the X-Men. 
But not without Archangel, Iceman, and Beast all trying to simp on her, that is. Honestly, this game is absolutely amazing, and I wholeheartedly recommend this game to anyone looking for a good fighting game. I really hope this game comes out in America soon. <laughs> Capcom did have plans to release X-Men vs. Street Fighter in the West, but Sega decided not to produce the needed RAM carts to make the game run. And while Capcom had thought about releasing the game in Europe, with the cart bundled in, such plans were axed and the Saturn version of X-Men vs. Street Fighter stayed in Japan. It was around this time too that Sega in North America and Europe no longer saw the value of the Saturn and announced they would discontinue production in the West in 1998. Though there was another console that was competing with the Saturn from a little company called Sony and their little console called the PlayStation. Capcom had stated that the home versions of X-Men vs. Street Fighter would be released simultaneously on the Saturn and PlayStation. But the PlayStation version didn't see a release until 1998, two years after the game's initial release. In Japan, this version was known as the EX Edition, and it was also the only console version that was released in the West. And how does this version compare? Ugh, God, nothing about this game feels right. It's overly compressed, voice clips are missing, and to top it off, it's just a genuinely bad port. Because of the PS1's limited space, several features had to be removed, most notably the tag team feature. Except sometimes you can have them show up and do a move, I guess? So what's the point of selecting two characters on the character select screen when you can only use one of them? Don't you feel better about yourself? So now it's just another one-on-one -on -one fighting game that was so common this time around, and this port gets lost in the shuffle of other fighting games. Because why would you play this game when you have Capcom's own Street Fighter EX, or Darkstalkers 3, which was released the same year as this game, or Namco's Soul Edge or Tekken, or Hudson's Bloody Roar, or Mortal Kombat? Why play this game when there are tons of other games that take advantage of the hardware rather than trying to squeeze a game onto a console that wasn't made for it in the first place? Oh, and you can't forget that classic PS1 flair of loading, loading, and more loading. Okay, I think I've diverted a bit too far from what I was talking about. But the point is, try and get your hands on the arcade or the Saturn version. The Saturn version is the definitive port, and it'll be worthwhile. So, after the success of this game, Capcom decided to go at it again with the Marvel superheroes, but also involving a well-known celebrity. <laughs> 